Welcome back to my kitchen. It's been a couple of weeks, but we are back and we are ready to cook. So I thought maybe this time around, if anybody wants to cook along with me, the recipes will be posted on our website ahead of time, or you can watch now, cook later. You can go grab the recipe, or of course you can always grab the cookbook once I bring it back to the library or order it from another Buckles library and we'll have it ready for you for curbside pickup. So this week we are cooking from this cookbook. It is called Smitten Kitchen Every Day by Deb Perlman. And it is full of really delicious looking recipes. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was kind of hard for me to choose which one I wanted to do for today. Um, so we have two. If you've seen the recipes on the website, you know what it is. If you haven't, we'll get there in a minute. But there's a lot of good stuff in this cookbook. Um, I'll go through some of the recipes right now. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I have a couple bookmarked, you'll see. Um, of course, there are salads. It's like a pretty well-rounded cookbook. Section for salads. Is this, what is this? Breakfast flipped crispy egg taco with singed greens. Like, that sounds amazing. Uh, these blueberry muffins look really good. Potatoes and asparagus grabiche. I don't know what a grabiche is, but um, it looks pretty good. <laughs> um, there was another one that I bookmarked that I was almost convinced we were going to do, and then I decided not to. Um, but it's Brussels and three cheese pasta bake which is basically like somewhere between a baked ziti and a macaroni and cheese with Brussels sprouts, which is one of my favorite vegetables. I decided not to do that today. Um, and then what was the other one? Oh, just like a really nice little like snacky snack. There are also some little snacks and sides in here. Um, what is this? Herb and garlic baked camembert, which just looks amazing. Like, look at that. Oh my gosh. I love a good baked, soft, delicious cheese dip, anything. But what we're going to do today is we're going to make, let me pull out the other bookmarks now, um, broccoli, cheddar, and wild rice fritters, which looks like this. And olive oil shortbread with rosemary and chocolate chunks. So it's not like a, a sweet shortbread. It's kind of like a, almost a savory, but it's still kind of a dessert, right? It's with the desserts. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. I decided I wanted to try it, so we're going to try it. So that's where we're going to start today. We're going to start with the olive oil shortbread with rosemary and chocolate chunks. I have already preheated my oven to 325. And we're going to get started with that. I'm going to put my cookbook down. I got my bowl. I got my olive oil. I have my rosemary. I have um, the chocolate that I'm using. It says use a semi-sweet chocolate chopped into small dice. So I'm using dark chocolate chips. Um, I figured for me I wanted to definitely have a variety of chocolate chips in my fridge because chocolate, right? Um, <laughs> So, but I decided to go with the dark because I guess I wanted to go a little uh, more bitter rather than going with something sweeter. I don't know, maybe it will need something sweeter. I don't know. I, I prefer dark chocolate anyway, so that's where we're going. Um, so let's see, I have my measuring cups. So in a large bowl, you're going to whisk together flour, powdered sugar, two tablespoons of turbinado or raw sugar. Um, two tablespoons of turbinado sugar and some salt. Then you're going to add the olive oil, rosemary, which I need to chop up a little bit, um, stir to combine, add chocolate chunks, stir again, and then it's like literally, that's like a very quick dough to make. That's literally it. So we're going to start measuring out the ingredients. So my flour, I need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. There we go. And I, many of you know, I don't keep flour in the house, so I ran over to my parents house last night I was like I need flour <laughs> um, 
So now I, I'll have some flour just reserved in case I need it for future episodes of Book Cooks and next week we're going to need it. But I'll share that with you later. Well, I guess I could use, well, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. All right. A little more in there. How many Ziploc bags are in here, Mom? Okay. It's not quite one. Not quite one, we gotta go back for a little bit more. Okay. Should put it in a jar. Right, I need like a little cute flower jar or something. There's no room in this kitchen right now. Half cup. Come here, half cup. There we go. Okay, there's my flour. So, okay, just one more left. All right, seal that back up again and put that to the side. And then I need some powdered sugar, which is just half a cup. There we go. Okay, yeah, there's some in here. I recently used up all of my powdered sugar making buttercream frosting. It's a lot of powdered sugar. Not recently, I guess that was July, but still. I used up a lot. And now my reserves are down, but I'm trying not to keep sugar in those. But I guess it comes in handy right now. All right, so I got about about half a cup. Come on, buddy. Got it stuck to the cup. That's what happened. Okay, get in there. All right, so there's that. So I'm done with the sugar. I'm gonna put that. Get it out of my way out of my way. Um, the two tablespoons of a raw sugar. And the recipe does call for a little bit more, so what you what we'll do when it's right about ready to go in the oven is um, we'll sprinkle the top with a little bit of raw sugar, which will be really delicious and wonderful. There's my two tablespoons of that, so I'm gonna move you out of my way. Okay, what's next, what's next? And some salt. It says about half a teaspoon of fine sea salt. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grind some in. You know me with the salt. I'm just grind it in. That's probably good, okay. All right, and let me just mix this all together. Can you see it? There it is. Mix this all together just to make sure it's combined. Try to get rid of any sugar lumps. Big lump of sugar in there. Okay. <laughs> all right, good. That looks like it's all mixed together good. Okay, so now we're gonna add in the olive oil and rosemary. So I'm gonna chop up my rosemary a little bit. So I normally don't like rosemary, but it's not a flavor thing, it's a texture thing. I don't like the texture of rosemary. I hate it when it's on like my, my meat or potatoes. Like, I just not into it. So I am taking a little bit of a leap here to do this. We'll see. How much do I need? About a teaspoon, so not, not that much. I'm gonna just kind of pull it off the center, I guess, right? Can you tell I never use fresh herbs? Almost never. Most, I mean, I use a lot of fresh basil, of course. I mean, saw me use the fresh mint a couple weeks ago. It does smell good, though. I mean, I gotta hand it to rosemary. It does smell delicious, especially fresh. I have a, uh, a rosemary essential oil that I'm kind of like, what do I do with this? But I make a um, like an air freshener out of it. Um, you do like witch hazel and water in a in a little glass bottle, 
and you combine it with essential oils. So I usually do rosemary and lemon essential oil and you just spray it as a room air freshener and it's pretty delicious. Not delicious, I'm cooking, that's what I'm saying. It smells good, it smells clean and fresh and wonderful and it's all natural. So that's what I do with my rosemary oil. All right, I think that's enough. I can put the rest of these back. I'm gonna get rid of the empty stalks. I'm just gonna try to mince this up fine, I don't know. Just so it's not, it's the texture. Like I said, it's the texture. I don't like feeling like I'm chewing on pine needles, you know? So I'm just gonna try to make this as fine as I can. And also when you're crushing herbs and cutting them, you're releasing the oils so everything becomes more fragrant. That's what we want. any big pieces. That's a big piece. You can't come to the party. You can't come to the party. I don't know. What about any of you? Love, hate rosemary? I don't know. Did you eat rosemary shortbread? <laughs> like I said, I think it sounds like a pretty interesting, delicious combination, so I'm going to give it a shot. Alright, that's not bad. So I'm going to put this in, then we're going to add the olive oil. It does smell really delicious and fragrant and wonderful. All right. Oops, get that all in. All right, how much olive oil? It is half a cup of a mild olive oil. So you're not going to use extra virgin for this. Um, it will probably taste a little funny if you use an extra virgin olive oil because it's got such a strong flavor, which is why it's great for, um, it's great for dressing things and drizzling on top of things. But if you've ever tried to use like a very fragrant extra virgin olive oil in cooking, that it's too strong. Like I tried making a homemade mayonnaise with it once and it was, not good. It almost tasted rancid. And the oil wasn't rancid, but it was just too much of a strong flavor. That batch of mayonnaise was not very yummy. I've learned my lesson. Now I only make it with avocado oil now. Okay, so pour that in. All good there. I'm gonna put this off to the side. So stir com to combine. Then you're gonna add in your chocolate chunks. It's not a very wet, well it's a shortbread, not a very wet dough. Really, this is all that I'm adding? It's a lot of dry. <laughs> As usual, things haven't changed over the last couple weeks. I just read a recipe and then I kind of weigh it and see what happens. Yeah, it does resemble a shortbread dough. Okay. Okay. I say, hey, that sounds like a good idea, and I just kind of make it up as I go. I'm gonna toss in my chocolate chips now. This is about half a cup. So this is like whole recipe, everything is half a cup. Half a cup. Yes, I have been snacking on my chocolate chips. I made sure to open it up before the video because you may have seen me in previous videos going, I should have opened this ahead of time, and I, I never do. So I did open this ahead of time to make sure I didn't get it stuck. Um, and then of course I had to taste test them, make sure they weren't poison, and then I just kept snacking on them. And that's just what happened. All right. Um, yeah, I feel like I need a little more oil or something. All right, well, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix it with my hands and kind of see what happens. Get some of the chunks off of the whisk. Everybody. I mean, it's wet. Yeah, there are some wet pockets. Okay. When in doubt, go in with your hands and mix. Get, get messy. Get messy to bake, right? Why not? And 
hopefully it's not too warm today so I was not mad about turning on my oven. You know me, normally I get a little mad about it and I've been avoiding doing a lot of things with the oven for some recent recipes, but today is okay. Well, this is nice. So I can see why the author chose to use the turbinado sugar. So you're not gonna be able to see this, but I'm gonna hold it up anyway. I don't know if you can see, there are some little dark flecks in there, not, not the rosemary, but there are some little dark flecks and that's the turbinado sugar, which just has a different texture entirely. So you might get some little pockets between the sea salt and the turbinado sugar. You might get some little pockets of sweet, salty, which is a really nice combination. We also know that you add salt to bring out the other flavors, so it's not necessarily to be salty, but okay, not bad. All right, it's better. When in doubt, just trust the recipe. So I already have a cookie sheet uh, with some parchment paper on it. to my usual book cooks fashion. It says, you know, okay, you're gonna put it in between two sheets of parchment paper and roll it out and no. Here in my kitchen, we're a little lazy for that. So I just have my sheet pan already prepared. I'm gonna move this this way so you can see it better. And I'm gonna just plop my dough right on top and it's not that sticky. So I'm gonna just use my hands to smooth it down down. I'll move this bowl in a second so you can see better. Right into the sink. And I'm just going to spread it out with my hands. It's rustic and homemade looking. I'm not using the rolling pin. The rolling pin is all the way up on the top of all of my cabinets. And I've already, I've already reached up there several times today, both to find the parchment paper and to decorate. I realized I forgot the rolling pin and then I said to myself, I'm not going back up there. Not going back up there. So, um, does it say how thick it should be? It just says a roundish slab, maybe eight-ish inches. Does this look like eight or eight inches? No. I'm going to even it out a little more on this end. And what you can do, it's totally optional, is you can grab some egg white and just kind of lightly beat it and then brush the top. And that just makes, just adds some nice color and shine. Um, I do not feel like doing that. I don't feel like wasting an egg white on that. Um, what is wrong with me? Um, and then you, we're going to take, oh no, I need my turbinado sugar again. It's right over there. And we're going to sprinkle a little bit of the raw sugar on top again. Um, just for some texture and it looks good and it tastes good, sugar tastes good. So I'm going to grab another teaspoon of sugar, right? I just need another teaspoon just to sprinkle on top. Let me just grab that. I'm going to wash my hands quickly. texture that's like those blueberry muffins that I was looking at in the book before they have those nice big sugar crystal chunks on there and that's one of my favorite things when you go get a muffin from a bakery and it's got the big sugar crystals oh my goodness so delicious okay so this is gonna go in the oven now for about 20 to 25 minutes so let's see what time what 12.15, so I'll check on it at 12.35. I can't see. Um, even though I have glasses, it's fine. All right, so I'm gonna put this in my oven and we're gonna go for it. Go in. Where are we at? Oh, yeah, I guess we're on a good temperature. Go for it, buddy. I'll see you in 20 minutes. 20 to 25 minutes. Just 
a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears and now we're gonna go over to the broccoli wild rice cheddar extravaganza. Um, okay, so let me switch pages here on my recipe. Okay, so this is nice because it's like, if you have leftover rice, here's what you can do with it. I never have leftover rice because I don't really eat rice. So like Wednesdays are my cheat day now apparently. So, so I went and I made some wild rice mix. So I've got that. I actually think I have too much for this recipe. Well, about two cups and I think I have about three. So we'll see. Um, three large eggs, I have to get those from the fridge. I didn't get them yet. Let me do that. So it's basically, it's just eggs, rice, broccoli, scallions. I didn't have any scallions. I wasn't going looking for scallions and sharp cheddar cheese. So I'm going to go grab my three eggs. Um, I'm going to measure out my rice first because I think I have too much, like I said. So let me get another bowl. Alright, so literally I need, I need two cups of rice. I'll put somewhere else. It's gonna be fine. Well, this is like two and a half cups. Okay. I'm gonna put back in this bowl. I was not prepared as usual. What am I doing? Okay, so I'm gonna put this somewhere else. Hang tight. So I've got my rice. So using a fork, beat the eggs in a bowl until combined. Then add the rice, broccoli, scallions, cheddar, and stir to combine. Another like kind of one pot. And that's the whole shtick of this cookbook is that the food is delicious. It's food that you may not have thought of trying before or not thought of just looking at the ingredients in your fridge, but the ingredients are pretty common and everything seems to be like no muss, no fuss. That's the whole, like I said, that's the whole thing about the, the cookbook and I appreciate that. You know, I like to cook. I like to explore new foods. I like to try new things. But um, if it's going to take me a long time, it's going to take a million different bowls. I'm kind of like, okay, really? Do I have to? Um, so I'm going to just crack my eggs, then I'll toss them in the trash, wash my hands. I'm going to heat them up, and then I'll add all the other ingredients minus the scallions, which I didn't feel like. Toss these eggs, shells. Okay. All right. Um, so let's break these eggs and beat them up. And then we just add the rest of the ingredients and then we fry them up and it should be super easy. Um, I love this kind of thing. I like doing little fritters on the stove. I like doing zucchini fritters every now and then. Um, that's actually one of my favorites. Yeah, I think those are the only kind of fritters that I make, zucchini. All right, there we go. It doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm gonna put my rice back in the bowl. There we go, my friends. Grab my cheddar cheese and broccoli. So this is great. You can use frozen broccoli for this recipe. Um, I'm gonna give it like just a quick little easy chop. Yeah, 
so I used frozen broccoli and I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, totally nuke it in the microwave. I just got it so that it was defrosted. And now I'm just going to give it a little chop and it'll finish cooking and warming up in the microwave. I mean, in, on the stove, it was in the microwave. And just make sure not to get any of the extra water. Um, you can see there's a lot of liquid at the bottom because it was frozen. So you don't, you just don't want that in your uh, little fritter mixture here. Just going to keep chopping this up so it's not big, 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 big chunks. We don't want that. That's hard to eat. It doesn't cook up so nicely in the little fritters, I assume. A couple big forks in here that you just got to, you just got to come down. So I don't know about any of you, but even though restaurants are opening in more and more capacities, I'm still pretty much just eating at home and doing a lot of cooking. Um, I'm, you know, I mean, I definitely don't do takeout as much. Maybe I get or go still do outdoor dining like once a week, if even, but I'm definitely still doing a lot of my own cooking, which is why I'm happy to be doing this because I can share all of the things that I'm trying. You know, we have so many cookbooks at the library, so many cookbooks. And right now I'm just kind of particularly looking at cookbooks that we have in the library. You know, this doesn't even touch like some of the ones that I was doing earlier on in stay at home orders where, you know, it was on Hoopla and Libby. There's just so much. There's so much. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm just going to make sure I get the excess liquid out. I go ahead and toss that into my bowl. And with the broccoli. Oh yeah, I kind of measured ahead of time. And then I was like, oh, but there's like just a couple of pieces left in the bag. I'm not gonna put that in the freezer. So there's a little extra broccoli in here, but it doesn't hurt anybody. Just gonna squeeze it out. This is very appealing. my hands real quick. All right, and now we're gonna add the cheddar cheese, which is three quarters of a cup. Oops, this is a quarter cup, right? Yeah, okay. And so I'm using pre-shredded cheddar cheese, so nice and easy when it's pre-shredded. This is one of those situations where you definitely go with the pre-shredded. so easy that way. Okay, here's one. Two and one more for three quarters of a cup. Oh, making a mess. There we go. Okay. One of my favorite cheeses. I'm gonna put this back in the fridge so it stays nice and cool. And then we just mix this up and it's ready to go. Uh, again, if you do have scallions and you wanna do scallions, this is when you add your scallions in. All right, let's mix. Are we back? Okay, hi. We're gonna mix it up and see how it combines. I'm sorry, my internet seemed to have went out a little bit, but I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna finish cooking until it's time to eat, really, you know that. Okay. I'm just gonna mix it until combined, you can see that, there we go. And I love broccoli cheddar. I don't know about any of you, but it's one of my favorite combinations. I mean, give a, give a shout if you love broccoli cheddar. Broccoli cheddar soup, broccoli cheddar macaroni and cheese, broccoli cheddar as a side dish. My One of my friends, their favorite food is cheesy broccoli and it's definitely a side vegetable that I can get on board with. I love vegetables though, you know that it's not. Vegetables are not an issue for me, but when you add in some cheese, everything's better. Everything's better when you add in cheese, okay. So this looks pretty well combined. See how it looks? 
yeah, everything is well mixed. I've got a little bit of broccoli, a little bit of cheddar, a lot of rice in every single bite. That's, you know, that's what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything is combined so that you have like everything in every bite kind of a thing. Okay, so we're going to turn on the stove. What we're going to do is it says to use both olive oil and butter for frying. I'm not sure why. I'm just going to use butter for frying. At least I think that'll work. I don't know. Yeah, once the pan is hot, add a tablespoon of olive oil and a pat of butter so that they like mix together. I guess that's more of a flavor thing than a fat and frying thing, but I'm just gonna use the butter. Okay, there you go. So I'm gonna let this pan heat up for just a second, then I'm gonna add in my little pat of butter. I got my spoon here to scoop it out a little bit better than, than this guy. You can go in the sink, thank you for your time. close to time to check on the cookie too. Do it all at once. Uh, it says about one and a half tablespoons of the rice mixture is going to go into the pan and you just kind of make sure you flatten it out so it looks like a little patty. All right, here we go. Here's a nice pat of butter. Go ahead and melt for me my friend. as well. Move this. So I use these beeswax wraps instead of um, like plastic bags or wax paper or anything because it's environmentally friendly but you can't can't let it get too warm because then the beeswax melts, right? All right I'm going to turn that flame down a little bit now that this pan is nice and hot. And we're gonna go ahead and scoop some on and see how we do. Never made this before. This is all live and experimental. Here we go. See, I'm just kind of like, kind of trying to shape it into a little patty. I don't know. Here we go. So you kind of want to leave these alone. So it's made up of so many different things and they're not really combined. There's the egg is the only binder. So you want to wait until it gets crispy on the bottom. So you got to kind of figure out what that's going to look like for you and your pan and your, your specific mixture because um, that makes it easier to flip. So I'm going to be patient for a second. It smells good already. I love the smell of melting, cooking cheddar cheese. One of my favorites. Why, why do I love cheese so much? Yes, this is not, y'all, this is gonna be a good experiment. We're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna check on my cookie. Not yet, give it another five minutes. Are you ready to flip? nice and brown on this side so the cheese and the egg kind of cooked and helps hold everything together. Move you to the side. And let's see if there's another one that's ready to flip. I don't know about this one. This one's kind of a mess. <laughs> it's like when you make pancakes and sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen. Although I've actually gotten really good at the pancake thing. There we go. There we go. All right, 
right, so that one broke apart. Eh. The important thing is that they look and smell absolutely delicious. I'm going to get a plate to put these on. Obviously, I still have a lot of mixture to go. We still have about five minutes left for the cookie, so we'll see what happens. Grab my spooky season plate, um, which as many of you know, I use these all year round. Although it is, we are getting a little spookier in here. And then, I don't know if you can see like right here in the corner, there's a ghost hanging from my cabinet. We're spooky in here. My kitchen is almost done. My kitchen is almost done being decorated. It makes me very happy. All right. I think you're ready to go on the plate, my friend. Not you, just you. There we go. All right, what do we think about this one? Almost. This one. solid as hers look in the book. Just like little vodkas or something. They're like perfect and they're all together and mine's like breaking apart a little bit. All right, you stay there. You're not done. Let's do some more. is a little wet. I think my broccoli was still a little too wet. So I guess you could use frozen broccoli like I did, or you could not. I mean, that's the thing. Vegetables have a lot of water in them, and when you use them frozen, they have more. Alright, this one is definitely ready now. The cheese is getting all crispy, and I love that the um, there are places where the rice is getting really crispy and nice. I mean, this is a good recipe. I'm actually pretty excited for this, and it's like I said, it smells pretty good in here. As these are coming out of the pan, I'm gonna add uh, dress them with a little salt and pepper. So I don't think I put that in there, and I probably should have. Did I? I was supposed to do the salt and pepper with the eggs. Whatever. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. These are browning up nicely. Check on my cookie in a minute. I'm just gonna put it in here now. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I? What am I ever doing when I'm cooking in the kitchen? I always forget everything. flip ever. I don't know how that just worked. Okay. It's looking good. I'm into it. I'm excited. Alright. I'm going to take a little sneak. A little sneak taste. Oh, it's good. Wow, this is this is really good. Um, I am 
very impressed by how that tastes. That is pretty scrumptious. Um, like I said, some of the, the cheese has gotten all crispy. The eggs are baked, so they're kind of just a binder. There's nothing eggy about this. Some of the pieces of the, the rice, the wild rice and whatever is in yours, mine is brown rice, barley, and radish seeds, Trader Joe's, why? Um, some of that gets a little crispy on the bottom, but it's still soft in the middle, and the broccoli is just wonderful with all of those together. This is really good. I'm into it. Okay, let's see, are you ready? No, you're not, not as brown as I would like you to be. Shall we check the cookie? I'm gonna go grab another oven mitt. I like my spooky oven mitts. This is my favorite time of year. Like from now until the end of December, it's just a mish, it, it is the nightmare before Christmas in this house. It's just the way it is. dry edges like the shortbread but it still looks like it needs just a little I might actually just turn the oven off and let it sit in the warm oven for the next few minutes and I think that should be good but I don't want it to cool down too much because what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cut them while it's still warm um, and then ooh, just flinging pieces of rice everywhere and barley everywhere um, and then let it cool completely. That way it's easier to cut because it is a shortbread. It will crumble if you try to cut it while it's dry. You don't want that. Flatten it out, make a little patty. Wonderful. This recipe makes a lot of these fritters. It's pretty good. Okay. These guys go. Um, of course, also, if there is a cookbook that any of you would like me to test out here live in the kitchen, something that maybe you saw at the library or you heard is coming out, let me know. I'd be so happy to um, take cookbook requests, I guess. I don't know. Um, see what happens. She's really good. Like, really good. Okay, so I'm going to just close up this cookbook. We're done with it for today. This is delicious. I'm really into it. Alright, what do we think, Cookie? Should you come on out? Smells good. All right, we'll tidy up a little bit while we're waiting. Put this away, have another chocolate chip. Just gonna snack a little. Oh. <laughs> All right. this up a little bit so I can take out my cookie tray. Put this back in the fridge so it doesn't get warm and melt.
they always say that like, I don't know if you ever watch food cooking competition shows as much as I do, but they're like, you need to keep your work area neat as you're cooking. I'm like, do we? It's so hard. It's much easier when you're done just to toss everything in the sink and then leave it until you're done eating and maybe the end of the day. I don't know. I feel like if I were on a cooking competition, they would tell me that my working station was a nightmare and I would get points off for that. I would definitely get points off for that. Okay. Just to be honest. All right. So I've got my plate. Put this here. Move my cutting board. I'm going to protect my counter with these hot pads. I'm going to uh, take a look. Well, first we're gonna check these. I only have a couple more scoops to do. You guys ready? No. Judging by that, no. Fair enough. Alright. There we go. Come on, friends. Come join your friends on the plate. Good. One more little batch. Cookies coming out, we'll cut them, we'll see what happens. Leaning tower of pizza of dishes in my sink. You're so lucky you never see that side of the kitchen. <laughs> All right, this is pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get my pan. I mean, this is great. This is a great side dish because it has your veggies. You have some dairy in it. If you do eat grains and rice, you've got some grains in there, some fiber, is there fiber in there? All right, come on out, my friend. Ready. I think. Okay. I'm gonna put that on my hot pads. Check the counter. Okay. There we go. Can you see it? Ooh, I gotta move the camera. Or move this. What are we doing? There it is. Okay. I'll tilt the camera down a little bit. There it is. Hello. Don't fall. It happens every time. Okay. So this is good. So I'm gonna grab a knife. Actually, you know what? Better, I'm gonna use my pizza cutter. Where are you, pizza cutter? Flip these. Then we'll use the pizza cutter. Boom. Oh, that's a good one. Ready? That's a good one too. All right, one more, one more. Here I am. <laughs> That's why I never tilt the camera down so you can see more of my counter because then I go like this. And I'm like, I'm like the teachers or adults in like every cartoon. I'm like the nanny and the Muppet Babies. Like you just never see our heads. Why is that? Shout out to everybody who remembers the Muppet Babies. Okay. So I'm just gonna cut this into little little cookies. Little cookie friends. Let's do it this way first. And it definitely like I can see, and every time that I've poked it to kind of feel for doneness, you can I can feel that it's got that crumbly, um, melty shortbread texture, which I love. Okay, so this goes in 
to the sink as well. It's a little, it's like Leaning Tower Pisa slash like Jenga. So it's like, which piece is gonna make it topple? Okay. So we let that cool. We're gonna take these off the stove. Heavy, hefty plate. That's pretty good. All right, friends. Oh, delicious. So wonderful. I mean, it does have eggs in it, but um, could serve this up with another protein or something. Get some grilled chicken. Um, canned chicken like I do when I'm really lazy. Canned chicken from Trader Joe's is super clean. It's literally just chicken, which is great. Um, or you could, you know, especially, I mean, if you are vegetarian, but you definitely, you're not vegan, you eat eggs. That's, that's a pretty good little, I mean, that's a good lunch. That's something that's really good to kind of like just pack up in your lunch bag because it's got the eggs. It's not a lot of protein, but um, because you did split three eggs up into all those patties. But I mean, there is some protein in there. And you know, like I said, you kind of hit your food groups in that, right? I'm not a nutritionist. Don't listen to me. What am I saying? Okay. Um, I'm going to take this off the heat so the pan cools down. Right. Um, I really want to try these, but it's like, don't. They need to cool down. And they do. They totally need to cool down. I get it. I get it, but they look really good. They smell really good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another plate. I'm gonna move this back up so I don't have to keep crouching. Here we go. I'm gonna grab another plate and uh, take take it off of the pan where it's still a little warm so that it'll cool down faster. And then I'm gonna eat as usual. You get to watch me eat. It's so weird. Is that like one of the weirdest part of shows on? food channels, like not cooking shows, where obviously you want to see them taste it and be like, oh, this is good, you should try my recipe. But when you're just watching shows of people going to eat, and you're like, oh, I'm mad, I'm jealous. I still watch them anyway, it's fine. I'm gonna put these in the fridge, I'm gonna get my plate. slide this right onto my plate. Perfect. Look at how easy that is with the parchment paper. That's why they tell you to put parchment paper down. I mean, and also so it doesn't stick. This is definitely a no-stick pan. We use it for cookies all the time. But so much easier with the parchment paper. I love it. Alright. Yeah, I mean, they still need to firm up a little bit, but I mean, look at that. That looks good. It looks good. It smells good. You know what it reminds me of when you use tea to bake, like tea and cookies. Like the the smell is not overwhelmingly of rosemary, but it's got that fragrance as if you were you were making uh, a shortbread with tea, which I know is also a really popular thing, like lavender shortbreads or Earl Grey shortbreads or whatever. Um, it smells good. All right, we're gonna try it in a minute. another plate. How many spooky plates do you have? So many. Okay, so I'm going to serve myself um, some of these burners. Take a little cookie or two. And it's time to taste. Which is silly because I already did, but you know, whatever. 
for reals these this time. I also feel like this would taste really great if you wanted um, a little sauce and you could do, I don't know if I would do a ranch, I feel like I would just do like a seasoned sour cream, salt, pepper, sour cream would be really delicious. Aside from the fact that I don't normally eat rice, welcome to cheat day, I would probably make these again. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Like I said, I love the combination of broccoli and cheddar. It hits really well on this plate. It's delicious. Cheddar cheese is my favorite thing. I'm into it. And again, this is just a nice way, especially if you have kids and they hate leftovers or anybody in your family, you hate leftovers. It's just like, why do I have to eat the same thing over and over again? This is, like I said, a great way to reuse any kind of rice. It doesn't need to be wild rice or like a brown rice medley, whatever this is, Trader Joe's. Um, but it does taste better. It adds like a little better flavor profile. I don't know. Um, but, but you can use any kind of rice, um, leftover white rice from takeout. Make this too. Delicious. So good. All right. A little more. <laughs> Trains passing by. So good. Oh my goodness. All right. Take a sip of water. I'm gonna try this little shortbread that I'm so excited to try. All right. Water bottle. Again, from my eco-friendly kitchen, my glass water bottle. Obviously I have like reusable glasses and stuff here, but I was at work this morning. I was in the building this morning, so. Um, so it's glass, so it's really easy to clean. It doesn't get funky like, um, plastic or even the metal water bottles I find get a little funky. The glass is so easy to clean. All right, ready to try shortbread? Can I like get it through the camera? <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. This one's got like some sugar on top. It's still warm, but whatever. Hmm. Oh, wow. Oh wow, that's good. I'm really surprised. Like I said, I don't normally cook with rosemary. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. So there are, there are little pockets of sugar. There are little pockets of salt. And then there are little hits of the herbal flavor of the rosemary. And it's not too strong. And the dark chocolate chips were definitely the right decision. I'm glad that I went with the darker chocolate chips than the sweeter or lighter chocolate chips. But you can't even, I mean, the olive oil isn't really even that strong. It doesn't taste like olive oil, but it's just a really nice mellow flavor throughout the whole thing. And it's crumbly and it melts in your mouth and it has chocolate chips in it. Like, I can't go wrong. Uh-huh. Oh boy. I gotta bring these to my parents' house. Otherwise, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. <laughs> it's good. I did not know what to expect. I just knew that I was curious and I thought it sounded good in theory and it is good. So that's what we have for today. We have our broccoli, cheddar, wild rice fritters and our olive oil, rosemary, chocolate chip shortbread. What a combination, but we did it and it's delicious and I approve of these recipes. So the recipe is still available on our website for the next day or so. Otherwise, I encourage you to check out this book for yourself. You can get it at a couple of different Buckles libraries. If our copy is checked out, you can order it. And once it comes in, we'll help you place a hold uh, for, for a pickup time, for curbside pickup or in our new 24 seven lockers that we are getting off the ground this week. They're super cool, we love them. Um, I will put up next week's, um, let's talk about next week's recipe. I'm gonna do 
um, Cook Like a Rockstar by Anne Burrell. I originally picked out two recipes, but I think I'm just going to go with one. And one of the reasons why we are not making the Brussels sprouts macaroni bake this week is because <laughs> look at what we're making next week. Killer mac and cheese with bacon. I did make, I know I made macaroni and cheese months ago uh, on here, but here's a different recipe and making macaroni and cheese from scratch is always something that I just want to keep trying. I don't know why I'm obsessed with it, but I love macaroni and cheese, so we're going to give it a shot. Um, the other recipe that I found was like a Parmesan flan, and so basically it's somewhere between, it's like a savory custard. Um, I think it's like as an appetizer or something, and I thought that was a super interesting recipe, but I feel like if we're going to do macaroni and cheese, we're just going to do macaroni and cheese. That's enough. I don't need to also eat Parmesan flan. I don't need to eat all that. That's okay. But, <laughs> so I'll put up uh, next week's recipe a little bit later on our website today. And again, all of these books are, are in our catalog on Buckle, so you can go ahead, grab your library card, go on to bccls.org, and reserve a copy. And if it's already at your home library, they'll call you for a curbside pickup, or it'll be delivered, and your library will call you for curbside pickup. So, <laughs> that is it. Um, as usual, let me know what you're cooking or if there are any cookbooks you are interested in. I will be happy to check them out and take a look. Uh, until next time, enjoy your food, everyone. Enjoy your lunch. See you next time.